Father, in the name of Jesus. That's our prayer. In this season of rain, rain of testimonies, rain of abundance, we look beyond the gifts, we look beyond the blessings, we look beyond the breakthrough, and our focus, we are laser focused on you. That will be so deep in love with you, the giver of every of these good things. Uh -huh. That's our prayer this morning. We receive that grace, Lord. We receive that grace, oh God. Everything that argues, everything that contains with our love for you. In this month of June, remove it from our lives. Remove it from our lives. Every speck in our eyes that doesn't allow us to see you clearly. But then remove it from our eyes. In the name of Jesus, we love you more. We'll go to your secret place. We'll walk deeper with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, this morning, I ask that your word will come clearly. It will penetrate our flesh and go into this secret place in our spirit, man, and take position there. And whatever it's meant to do, it will perfect it in our heart this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Come on, church, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. I let them put our praise in. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Again, this morning, I uh, welcome you to church. Am I getting some echo? Amen. All right. Uh, our text will be taken from 1 Samuel chapter 7. I'll read from verses uh, 1 to 4. Hold on. I'll read from verses 1 to 4 and uh, 13 to 17. Uh, we're going to project it on the screen while I read. Praise the Lord. Are we ready? Now read this. Now verse 1. The men of Kijat Jerim came and took the ark of the Lord and brought it to the house of Abinadab on the hill and consecrated Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. So it was that the ark remained in Kijat Jerim a long time. It was there 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods and the, and the asteroid from among you, and prepare your heart for the Lord, and serve him only. He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the bells and the asteroids, and serve the Lord only. In verse 13, so the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come anymore into the territory of the children of Israel. Can you hear that? So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. Just hold somebody. Just say, in the name of Jesus, in this month of June, every trouble you spent in the month of May, it will not come into your life in the month of June. It will not come into your life in the month of June. Every struggle you had, every challenge you had in the month of May, in this month of June, it will not come into your life. It will not follow you. It will not know you. In the name of Jesus, the stories you told, the story of pain, the afflictions you had in the month of May, in this month of June, I forbid it. I forbid it. It will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Please, I just want you to get used to this as, we, as, as what is coming and, you know, gives us unction. the Spirit directors. We'll be praying. So just tell them, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Amen. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Then the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel from Ekron to God. And Israel recovered its territory from the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He went from year to year on a circuit to Bethel, Gigal, and Mizpah, and judged Israel in all those places. But he always returned to Ramah, for his home was dear. He judged Israel, and there he built an altar to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Child of God, you see, this at this point in time, it was a season of revival. It was a time when scripture says the ark of the Lord came back 
to the rightful place. The ark of God, it represents the word. So at a point in time, the word of God was non-existent. The word of God took a long vacation. It took a long journey. And nobody talked about the word of God. And if you look at uh, Judges chapter 21 verse 25, before this book of Samuel, it was said that, and the children of Israel, every man did what was right in their own eyes. So it was a time of chaos. It was a time of lawlessness. Whatever was right in your eyes, if it's good, that is the law. So everybody implemented their own form of righteousness. That was Judges chapter 21 verse 25. Whatever was right in their own eyes, nobody tells them what to do. It's okay by me. It's okay by me. And that settles it. But in 1 Samuel chapter 7, this whole dynamics change. It got to a point when the people who did whatever they wanted, they lamented. The word of God came back. They act. And they started, they were, they were restored. The worship of God was restored. Does that tell you that sometimes in life, when the word of God does not have a place in your life, it brings chaos. It brings chaos. So there was a spiritual condition that was wrong, but as soon as the ark was restored, as soon as the people, they changed their priorities. They're not like, God, it is you and you alone. Every of the foreign gods, every spiritual influence in their life, they removed it and they focused on God. See what happened. There was a spiritual deliverance before a physical deliverance. Bible says they were delivered from the hands of the Philistine. The peace that has eluded them for this long, the peace was restored. And there was now peace between them and the enemies around them. So spiritual deliverance precludes spiritual or uh, physical deliverance. They had to be a turn around. They turned to God. As soon as they turned to God, the enemies, the enemies that surrounded them, started living at peace with them. Oh, he said, when a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies, they are at peace with him. So in this period, we saw the fruit of revival. People who at one point in time, they, got, they turned their back on God. And all of a sudden, they started enjoying God's presence. They started enjoying right standing with God. It was a time of revival. And this is a fruit of revival. And that is what God has given us in this season of rain. When we say, God, give us rain. R is for rain. A is for alignment with his purpose. I is for intimacy. And N is for newness. That's why this period, I will encourage you, please, if you're not coming on Thursday during the worship, please be part of it. Because Thursdays, Sundays, they're all going to be the same. We've amped this up in this church. Sundays and Thursdays, there's not going to be a difference. So if you don't show up on the workshop on Thursdays or midweek services, you'll be missing out. You'll not be getting everything you're supposed to get. Don't say somebody, I'll see you on Thursday. I'll see you on Thursday. Like, like you mean it, I'll see you on Thursday. Thursdays and Sundays is all the same now. <laughs> amen, amen. And some people are laughing like they don't mean it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So we saw the fruit of revival. But you know, and Samuel was one of those who was mentioned during this period when there was a great revival in the land of Israel. Samuel was mentioned. But you know, and so we might be tempted to believe that this revival started with Samuel and will not give credit to whom credit is due. You see, this revival that started right now is started with a woman who nobody mentioned in this point in time. We never know when she died. Nobody mentioned Hannah. And that's why this morning, I will bring you a message titled, The Seed of Revival. Every time you see the fruit of revival in the church, every time you see the, the fruit of revival in the nation, it starts with somebody sowing a seed. Somebody has labored. Somebody has suffered. Somebody has sacrificed. Somebody has sowed a seed. I see mothers in this place who are sowing seeds that will, be, that, that will turn to greatness in the life of their children. I see parents who right now, every night, as you're kneeling down, praying with your children, teach them to pray. You are sowing seeds that will help them align with God in the future. So the fruit of revival, why we celebrate it? It's very important we celebrate the soul of the seed of revival. And that's why this morning we're looking at a character study in the person of Hannah. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, it was said about Hannah, what are the seeds of revival she sowed? 
Because we might be tempted not to mention her at all. But this revival, this fruit they enjoying, it started with Anna. It was the seeds she sold. What are some of the seeds Anna sold in her time? In Samuel 1 Samuel chapter 1, from verse 1 to 4, it talks about Hannah, that Hannah was barren because God has closed her womb. And sometimes when I look at that, I feel like running away. Why would God close somebody's womb? You know, but God had his purpose. God had his calendar concerning Hannah. Her womb was not meant to be, she was not barren. Her womb was just closed temporarily because God has a calendar that Samuel will come at a point in time when they will need the most. That the blessing will not come prematurely. But during that period when Hannah was going through, the scripture says Hannah was in a house where she was a first wife and right there under her very nose, Penina had a first child, second child, third child, up to number 10. Year after year, they were doing baby naming in the same house where she was. And year after year, they were all going to the temple to pray. They would make sacrifice. But how come those who are more gifted, they carry less gift? And scripture said, Penina tortured her. Not just thought, she tortured her. Are there people here who have been tortured with the things they don't have? People look at you because of what you don't have, they torture you for that. And I can tell you better. Hannah was being tortured for not having a baby. She was healthy. Ekana was healthy because Ekana had 10 children. So there was nothing wrong with Ekana. Are you getting me? There was nothing wrong with Ekana. But God just closed their womb. But it was just God's timing. But there are people here this morning. Perhaps the enemy has closed the door. The womb of opportunities. The womb of favor, the womb of creative ideas. Can you just pray this morning? Every womb of opportunities, every womb of favor, every womb of creative ideas that will launch me to greatness. I decree those wombs open this morning. I decree those wombs open this morning. In this month of June, the womb of job. Yes, job, profitable job. It will be open unto you this morning. It shall be open unto you this morning in the name of Jesus. For some of you, you need an answer that is closed right now. I decree in the name of Jesus, those answers, those answers, those answers that will put a smile on your face. Those doors are open. I decree those doors open this night, this morning, this morning, this morning. I decree them open in the name of Jesus. No more closed doors. No more closed doors. But there was something that I wanted to say. Year after year, year after year, Hannah kept going to the house of God. Scripture did not record that she went one year and the next year she, she, she did not go. Scripture did not have it on record that one Sunday she went to church and the next Sunday she did not go to church. Despite her situation, she was like David that said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of God. So the fact that her womb was closed does not mean that fellowship was closed. The fact that she was suffering one situation does not mean that her relationship with God was suffering. So year after year, despite her circumstance, God was still being worshipped. I want you to see, child of God, I'm challenging you this morning. No matter the delay, be determined that the worship of God will not suffer. No matter the blessing you have been given, be determined that the blessings of God in your life will not now be the barrier, the excuse why you cannot serve God. Year after year, no child. But when they look for those who come to worship, Hannah was there. She was in a provocative environment. But in that environment of provocation, she sowed a seed of grace. Scripture said, Penina taunted her, but there was no word. There was no record where Hannah responded so Anna sowed a seed of grace in a provocative environment the question this morning I want to tell you is this what are you willing to ignore as a seed to allow the Holy Spirit to move what are you willing to ignore this morning what situation are you willing to ignore this morning what, what taunt what, what abuse are you willing to ignore this morning as a seed to allow the Holy Spirit to move. To allow God to do that which he wants to do in your life. She sowed the seed of grace in a provocative environment. 
I want to tell you, church, there are no perfect people in church. Church is full of imperfect people. In fact, if we have a mat in the door of that church, we will write, perfect people are not welcome. Amen. We will write, perfect people are not welcome. Because church is for imperfect people. But in the midst of that imperfect situation where she was under pressure, was being, was being provoked, she sowed a seed of grace. She was willing to ignore it to allow God to do that which he had planned to do in her life. I want to tell you, there's another seed of seed and a sowed. She continued to love an insensitive man. Ekana was a good man, but you know, he's not my kind of guy. Ekana was not my kind of guy. You know, Ekana looked at Hannah and said, How, come on, why are you weeping? A woman who has not had babies, you're asking her why are you weeping? <laughs> you know, she has not had a baby. Ten babies in the house, all walking around, all grown up. Teenagers in the house, and she was the first wife. And one day, I kind of say, why, 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 why don't you eat? And Kana was so insensitive that he did not see that there was a more deeper need that the woman wants to carry her own child. But do you know what Hannah did? Even in that, despite the insensitivity of Ekana, the very thing Ekana ch chastised her about, Scripture said, she rose up and she ate. So an insensitive person. The words were not carefully chosen. And I want to show church this morning. Words, no matter how important they are, how you say it is more important than the importance of the word. No matter how important your words are, how it is being said is more important than the importance, than the weight that word carried. But you know what? Hannah chose to ignore those. This morning, the challenge to you is this. What words will you choose carefully as a seed of revival? What words will you choose carefully as a seed of revival? In a time like this, Hannah continued to love an insensitive person. That was an action she was sowing. Hannah sowed the seed of promise. She sowed the seed of promise. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9 to 11, he said that Hannah arose and finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. Hear this. This was a turning point. This was a defining moment. I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Scripture said, Hannah made a vow. There is difference between a vow and a seed of faith. There is difference between a vow and a faith promise. A faith promise says, God, if you will do this, I will do this. You stylish them. You put a caveat there. But there's something better, better than a faith promise. It is called a vow. A vow is absolute. It's like what Job said in Job chapter uh, uh, 13 verse 15. Even though he slays me, yet I will trust in him. It does not matter. Even if he slays me, I'll trust in him. Oh, it's like the kind of vow that was made in Habakkuk. He said, though the fig tree may not blossom, though there be no meat in the field, though even the, 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 the stall is empty, yet I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. That's a vow. As a vow. In Daniel chapter 3, same thing. The man said, Oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. We know our God will deliver us. But even if you will not deliver us, even if you will not, as a vow, where you make something that is not conditional. This is where Hannah, this is where God wanted to bring Hannah to. A place where she would make a con an unconditional, a deeper love for, for God. And when she, sometimes God is watching you. Say, God, God said, can I bring her to this point? And when she got that, when she made a vow, say, all the days of his life, he'll be in Nazareth. Now, let me tell you something. You know, in the days of Israel, the Nazareth, they don't drink. Oh, man. <laughs> <In our time. laughs> the church is quiet now. They don't drink. You don't have to touch the dead. You don't have to cut your hair. And the Nazareth vow, people do it at a uh, from 30 to 50 years old. So if I was there in those days as a Levite, 
I'll just drink all the drink I want to drink, right? <laughs> Till I'm 30 years old. I said, all right, now I want to be a Nazarite. But look at the kind of vow Hannah made. So people back then, they drank, but they drank enough till the age of 30, and they said, all right, now I'm a Nazarite. And I can just be for 20 years. 10 to 50, I'll not be, I, I, I will not drink. But let me tell you, Hannah did more than that. He said, he shall be a Nazarite all his life. Even though Samuel was already a Levi by heritage. So he was already the head of God. He was saying, God, I'm going to do something deeper. I'm going to go an extra mile. So what was the head of God? Hannah went further, took it further. She up up her game. So they see the promise. This morning, the question to you is, uh, what's precious, what precious things are you willing to sow for what you desire most? What precious thing are you willing to sow for that thing you desire most? For some of you, it's your time. Can you sow your time? Can you sow your worship? Can you sow your resources? For a revival, God is looking for those who will sow something precious. What can you give? What can you sow to get that thing you desire most? Hannah didn't just stop there. Scripture says Hannah sowed the seed of respect. Why Hannah was praying? You know when Hannah got in there, there was a man who was staying there. His name was Eli. Eli was sitting right there at the door watching everybody that came. I don't know what, whether it was counting the money. I don't know what it was, but Hela was doing something. He wasn't just sitting there sleeping. He was watching them. And all of a sudden, Hannah, Hela showed up. Woman, how long will you be drunk? At that point, my wife, how long will you be drunk? <laughs> and Eli and Hannah looked at her. Scripture says she was praying from the bitterness of her soul. She was pouring her soul out to God. And Eli, who was in spiritual decline, could not discern because that was the state Israel was. Even the man who was the shepherd of the house was in a state of spiritual decline. He could not see the pain and the bitterness Hannah was going through. Say, Hannah, woman, how long will you be drunk? But in a way, Hannah was right. Uh, Eli was right. The state of decline in spirituality was so low that people came to the house of God that they drank. So Eli has seen so much that he was so upset. He didn't say, are you drunk? She said, how long will you be drunk? So in those days in the house of God, drunk people came there. So he started praying, they were just drunk. <laughs> they speak in tongues. <laughs> Eli couldn't take it no more. But just that like this one day, Eli may smoke. Eli was wrong. In those days in the temple, we have Hophni and Phine house. There were so much lewd practices in the house of God back then. But you see, when revival comes, it meant to sweep every of those things away. Revival is meant to sweep prayerlessness away. Revival is meant to, 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 to sweep wordlessness away. So Ella accused her wrongly. But you know what? Do you know how Hannah, Hannah responded? Hannah sowed the seed of respect. Eli underst Hannah understood that Eli was the high priest in the house. So even though despite his, his mistake, Hannah said, no, my Lord. She responded with respect. But she also defended herself with respect. You say, your servant, your maid servant is not drunk. But she's going through anguish of soul. And I've come to pour out my pains to God. She responded to the man of God with respect, but also exercised her right to defend herself. You say, no, my Lord, I'm not one of those wicked women. I will not do this kind of wicked thing. So she agreed with the man of God in the house that it's a wicked thing to come to, to his house and be drunk. It's a wicked thing to come to his house and do lewd thing. But she said it with respect. Hannah sowed the seed of respect even while she was wrongly accused. The question this morning, what opportunity to sow seed of disrespect will you forfeit? What opportunity to sow seed of disrespect would you forfeit? You know, I don't want to be self-serving. You know, she understood who the man of God was in the house. And let me tell you, church, it doesn't matter whether you're in America, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Asia, the set man in the house, he has to be honored. That is God's order. Are you getting me? 
The pastor in the house has to be honored. There can only be one pastor in the house. Hannah understood this. It doesn't matter whether he's five years old, whether he's ten years old, it doesn't matter whether you're in Asia, it's not a cultural thing. Honoring those who serve, especially the pastors, the elders in the house, is not a cultural thing, it is biblical. I'll rest my case there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Can you say praise the Lord to somebody? <laughs> so, question this morning, what seed? What opportunity to sow seeds of disrespect will you forfeit? There's something more. Another seed Hannah sold. Hannah received her promise by faith. You know, after Hannah finished praying, Bible says, Hannah left and her countenance changed. Her face was no longer sad. The child was not received when Hannah became pregnant. The child was received when Hannah left that place and said, it is a done deal. She was a woman who used to be sad. She was a woman who used to cry. She was a woman who used to be bitter and in anguish. But one time, after she prayed, the Bible says she left there and her countenance was no longer sad. That is promise. She received her promise by faith. You may not have it in your hand right now, but by faith you have received it. Let me tell you, when you have an encounter with God, when something happens in the inside, it shows on the outside. She wasn't going about, like, oh, well, uh, I'm still expecting God to do this. No, 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 no. Why she believed in the inside? She acted it on the outside. What godly conduct, what act of faith are you willing to display to receive the promise God has given to you? Her face was no longer sad. She wasn't going about living in herself as a woman who is barren. She started walking on as a woman who is carrying children. Her face was no longer sad. There was a place of patience. That's why Hebrews chapter 5 tells us, he said, look, do not be sluggish, but be imitators of those who through faith and perseverance or patience, they received the promise. Patience. Hannah received the promise by faith. I don't know what you're trusting God for this morning. But you see, you can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't just declare something and cancel it with your mouth. That's what is happening today. We made prayers. We made declaration. But the next moment, unconsciously, you're already declaring, you're already canceling every declaration we've made. Not Hannah. She received her promise by faith. And one more thing, one more seed Hannah sold before we pray this morning. Hannah kept her promise to God. Scripture says in the process of time. That tells you and I that it did not happen immediately. It took time. But the fact that something has not happened doesn't mean you're carrying it. You carry it in the spirit before it comes in the physical. So she, was already, she already had a baby in the inside by faith. And it was just a matter of time before the baby showed up. She already had your healing in the inside by faith. And it's just a matter of time before your testimony becomes visible for all to see. You already had that job in inside by faith. It's just a matter of time before it comes out and you start clocking in and out. It's just a matter of time before you start counting the money from that business. I already have it by faith in the inside of me. And when I have it by faith in the inside of me, I start acting it out. I start living it. He said, let in your cord. You have no children. Begin to prepare your house. You have no children. Buy your baby cord. Because what you cannot receive by faith, you are not qualified to have it in your hands. Hear me again. What you cannot receive by faith, you are not qualified to handle it with your hands. Hannah's face was no longer sad. And it's just, it was just a matter of time. It was just a matter of time. Hannah showed up with three-year-old Samuel. Hannah showed up with three-year-old Samuel. Come on, church, let me open. Hannah showed up with three-year-old Samuel. Hannah showed up with three-year-old Samuel. One of the greatest prophets of Israel. One of the, I showed up, showed up, showed up. Don't tell somebody, I will show up with my blessing. I will show up with my blessing. Make that I will show up with my blessing. Can you just make an indication this morning? I will show up with my blessing. I will show up with my blessing. I will show up with my blessing. In the presence of time, in this month of June, I shall show up with my blessing. I will not walk past this 
this month of June empty handed, I will show up with my blessing. Make that your prayer this morning. You have been laboring in this church. You have been giving. You have been sacrificing. God is a good bookkeeper. He keeps record. He keeps record. God is a good bookkeeper. He keeps record. He will reward you. He will come through for you. In this month of June, this month of rain, I will show up with answers. I will show up with answers. Uh, tied to the goodness of God, to the working of God in my life. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning... This morning, how many unkept promises is tied to you? How many unkept promises? There need to be a seed of repentance this morning for many of us. For some of you, I've said, well, in this month of, in this year, 2019, Lord, I will pray. In this year, 2019, I will pray. I will read the word. I will serve you. That was a promise you made to God. But have you kept that promise? Half of the year is gone. Have you kept that promise? But this morning you can make, you can make, uh, uh, you can sow a seed of repentance. So God, uh, I didn't do too well as I promised you, but this morning, this morning I'm asking you for grace. I'm asking you for grace to turn over a new leaf. I'm asking you for grace to turn over a new leaf. Help me, oh God, make that your prayer this morning. I'm asking, oh God, for grace to turn over a new leaf. That I'll be fervent in the place of prayer. I'll be fervent in the place of the word. I'll be fervent in serving you. Can you just make that a seed of repentance this morning you're sowing? Make that a seed of repentance somebody is sowing this morning. Perhaps you're here this morning, or you're watching us online, you have never, never for once remember a time when you gave your life to Christ. Uh, this moment, uh, this is just an opportunity if you're here with us this morning, you're watching us. Uh, just say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because my sins have been paid for. Every point of my sin has been taken away by you 2,000 years ago. This morning, I accept you as my Lord and Savior come and reign in my life come and be the lord and master of my life thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed <laughs>